Hello everyone. So you've made it this far. You're able to uh, drop the um, your rig on top of the motion platform. Now, what's next? Um, in my previous video, I mentioned very, very critical piece of feedback, which is to leave the um, rig as light as possible. Uh, do not connect anything. No peripherals, uh, no wheel, no base, nothing, no chair, uh, no, no seat, none of that stuff. Um, and it's very important to, 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 to do that. Once you get to this point and you drop the top platform, uh, the, uh, the rig on, on, the top, on the motion platform, ensure that you connect all the cables because you need to do some tests before you continue your build. Connect all the cables. And if you bought this from um, Erasing Lab Team, they actually send you an email and tell you the configuration that are needed on the um, Thanos controller. So there's an option that if you hold the right key and the, the right um, button and reset, it will actually reset the controller and it will give you an e-racing lab uh, setting or an e-racing lab profile that's already pre-built into the Thanos controller. Make sure you do update the Thanos controller though to the latest firmware. So update the latest controller to the, uh, to the Thanos controller to the latest firmware make sure make sure you reset it again if you if you have any questions about resetting it and how to get the erasing lab profile let me know i'll show you how but erasing lab actually does send you a video on how to do it so it should be very straightforward and easy to do because it's very important to ensure that the surge and the traction loss platforms they're set to 100 millimeter stroke not 150. the four actuators the 3d apps they can actually be set to 150 but the other three the two traction loss and the surge will need to be at 100. So that new setting or the default setting that Erasing Lab has um, will actually take care of that for you. That's one. Um, very important to do that before you test or you connect power, you know, the before you power even the actuators uh, or connect it to, uh, the, to your computer. Do that while all, with only the USB cable connected um, to, the, to the PC so you're able to upgrade the controller and do what you need to do but do not connect the actuators to the controller yet. Okay, now you updated the firmware of the Thanos controller. Uh, you have the e-racing lab uh, settings uh, with 100 millimeter for the, for the three actuators at the bottom. Now what? <clears throat> now you go ahead and connect all the cables uh, to the controller. Make sure you connect per port, um, you know, the right ports. And of course, it is, it is, um, there's a lot of um, guides on how these things go, but basically what you need to do here, port one on your Thanos controller is going to be uh, the rear left actuator, port two will be the front left, port three will be the front right, port four will be the rear right, port five will be the traction loss rear, uh, port six will be the surge, and port seven will be the traction loss front. So make sure those are connected and um, next after you do that is you want to do you want to run a test to make sure all the actuators are, are working properly and they're moving like they are supposed to in my case um, they were all powered up everything was good but i did need to make some adjustments um, to the um, position of the um, of the rig. Like i had to center it because the minute it's i started to do the test it tilted to the right um it oh, and i would say tilt but it, it moved to the right and that was its position for testing and that's not what i wanted i wanted it wasn't straight anymore like it's like it is now um so um i'm not going to go in details uh, about what you need to do uh in, in sim hub on how to set it up this video is just about some quick feedback and quick guidance as you're setting this up but i can do a, um, a video in sim hub uh, about SimHub or any of the other, like I use SimHub, I use SRS, I use Sim Manager, and I can do a quick video on which one to go with. Um, so yeah, um, now upgrade SimHub to the latest version, which I think is 944, I believe, at the time of this video, 994 at the time of this video. Make sure you have the latest version of SimHub because SimHub included a new feature for motion that will allow you to automatically run some random tests on your motion platform. Yeah, you, you actually, okay, now you did that. You have SimHub running, version 994 at least. 
And the next thing you want to do is ensure that there's no other software on your computer that is running Ocean, which is in my case. So let me do that. Um, okay, so let me relaunch SimHub because I also have SRS and Sim Manager open. So okay, so let's do that. Okay, SimHub. Okay, so now we're launching SimHub. Again, it's crucial in SimHub. Before you do any tests or anything, you go to Motion on here and then go to uh, Platform Config and then right here. So if you go to Platform Config, this is all the, the latest version. If you're running an older version, you may not see this. And then you go and, and I already set it up with 3DOF with a search and fraction loss front and rear. Uh, under 3DOF, go ahead and set up the distance between your uh, actuators, the L1 and L2. Make sure you set this up. And right here, the actuator size, it's 150 uh, millimeter stroke. And then go back and also do the same for the surge and make sure that stroke is 100 millimeter. And go back and do the same thing, the th same thing with the traction loss. And uh, set up the distance as it's shown here and make sure the stroke are 100 millimeter. And then click OK. Now you've done all of this. The next thing you need to do is go ahead and click enable motion. And then on the top right, click on manual controls. And then right here, click on automated test cycles. Okay, so now the platform will rise up. Here, previously what happened it, this is where it moved a little bit to the left. So what you need to do in that situation is you'll see that for this situation, for this actuator right here, these sc four screws right here and four screws on this side, and the same thing on the back actuator, these um, these one, two, three, four, and four on that side. Make sure you loosen these screws, and then once you loosen these screws. You can actually be, you'll be able you'll easily be able to move the the um, the rig left or right to center it. So that will take care of it. Put it in the right center position after it moves. And uh, once you start this, uh, once you enable motion and you start this, and the and this and the um, uh, you know the the whole rig goes up. Then and you'll see uh, how it's going to look like. If it's centered, great. If it's not centered, do this. Move the um, the rig to the center. And then once you're, you're good with where it is, tighten the screws back. So that'll take care of this. Now, if you feel that you need to push the rig, um, uh, you know, which is now sitting you know, on top of the uh, bottom platform, right? So if you feel that it's a little forward or a little to the, so it's a little to the back or a little forward and you want to push it either a little to the front or a little to the back, what you will need to do is you will need to loosen these four screws, uh, these eight screws right here on this bracket, and then move it forward or move it back, you know, based on what you need. These are the um, configuration and the settings that you need to do. That's why I, I keep saying keep it light. Do not put too many things on, to, on, on the rig. So you'll make these adjustments. Once you are good with these adjustments, then you can continue building your rig. Um, and a question came up, somebody was curious, or like, why, why did I add um, the spacers here? Sure, the spaces are the, the spaces are optional. If you feel that you can connect the actuator directly to the rig and you have the room at the bottom, go for it. But in my case, it's like really, really tight. It may not actually fit properly. Um, so that's why I added the spaces right here. So it's really tight, So, but it's, it is optional. Okay, so now with that, now there is a option to open automated testing right here. You open the automated test and you can enable really you can you can easily enable what you want to test so for now i put all of the testings right here and then you click on uh, start automatic cycle and you'll see it will do some random tests
now I'm gonna go ahead and stop the test. And then, there you go. And you can do the same thing. Like if I open SRS, uh, I did the same test, to make sure everything is good. Um, same thing with Sim Manager. I will, you know, you open that tool if you, if you use it. But make sure you do the setup, you set the distance, uh, set up the stroke of the actuators uh, before you do any of this. Yeah, yeah, this is just a quick video. I want to give you some guidance before you, know, you continue with your build and thinking, oh, I set everything up now, let's continue the build and then test at the end. Nope. Once you get to the stage, make sure you test. And then once you are happy with what you have, go ahead and continue the build. Thank you.